Hello pet parents and welcome to another episode of Natural Pets TV. I'm joined by Dr. Ken Tudor, Dr. Liz Bales, and Dr. Patrick Mahaney. And I have got to ask this question I think most folks out there want to ask. Vaccinations. Dr. Liz, where do you stand on them and what's your guidance and advice? It's a great question and it's a complicated answer. If there was a simple answer, then we wouldn't be having the conversation. Uh, you know, vaccinations are not the enemy. We've, we've designed these vaccinations for your cat to prevent deadly diseases. And if you've ever seen, for instance, feline distemper wipe out a cattery, then you, you know how important these vaccinations can be. That said, there isn't a blanket recommendation that you can say for every cat all the time. So it's important to have a give and take discussion with your veterinarian about what's best for your cat. So how do you handle that at your office? Um, I have followed the, the protocol of the AAFP, uh, American Association of Feline Practitioners, and um, I like to do the every three year. Uh, if there's a high risk, uh, that means an animal that is exposed to animals outside and other animals that may have contact through screens and whatnot. But for lower risk animals, those that are completely in a 25 uh, um, story high rise that has no contact with other cats, we can probably think differently about, about the, the uh, uh, distemper and the, the leukemia vaccines uh, that may not be right for their lifestyle. I think we have to look at it as lifestyle. Absolutely, it's a lifestyle issue. And I think that it, it's different for kittens, right? So a kitten goes through a series of vaccines right. when they're young and, and those are much more frequent. Right. Um, but in, in the older cat, but something to think about, even for the high rise cat, <clears throat> you need to take into consideration if you're ever gonna bring in sure. a new cat. When you get a vaccine, it takes time from the time it's administered till it actually starts working to protect your cat against wh whatever it's being vaccinated for. So for instance, if your cat's unvaccinated, but you wanna bring a new cat in, you really need three to four weeks at least from the time the vaccine's sure. administered till you can hope for it to work. So you gotta think through what your expected life is, is gonna be with that cat, even if you are in a high rise. Absolutely. And with the kittens too, they, they have no immunity. Um, they have immunity from their mom, hopefully, and then they continue to get some immunity from nursing. So it's always important to think about when do we start the appropriate vaccination schedule for kitten. We wanna wait until the, the kitten has been weaned and they no longer have maternal antibodies that could interfere with their vaccine, uh, vaccine antibody production and then typically they're given a FERCP uh, uh, also known as a feline distemper vaccine every three to four weeks typically for a series of three and then we start thinking about potentially other vaccinations too like um, leukemia feline leukemia virus and rabies and actually in California there are no legally required vaccination requirements for cats mm -hmm. so really it's it's a recommended to give cats rabies for example but it's not legally required unlike dogs who are legally required to it's have a it. It's a good point to make that your state may have laws about rabies these vaccines, I practice in the state of Delaware, and there is a law. Mm -hmm. And in states where there is a law, the law is very, um, very severe, that if your cat has a wound of unknown origin, is what we call it, so if they're not vaccinated, in addition, if you don't have proof of that vaccine, which you would need to retain, and your cat gets out unexpectedly and comes home with a wound, uh, in the state of Delaware, it's a six month quarantine or euthanasia are your options. So um, it's very troubling as the veterinarian to have to deliver that news to someone who had no idea about the rabies law in their state. So I urge you to ask your veterinarian about the rabies law. Even if you think I'm keeping my cat inside, this doesn't pertain to me, things happen. Your, your cat can get out of in ways that you couldn't imagine. Life's full of surprises and you want to know what the law is in your state. I'd like to share an anecdote about that because when I had my cat only hospital, uh, rabies was a required vaccine for, for my staff's protection. Uh, so that if they got bit or if they got scratched, um, and which is common in a cat only practice uh, because we're always doing bad things to cats in their minds, um, that they, it puts them at risk. So I always uh, required rabies vaccines. And I had one client that came in and ad adamantly disagreed with me. And I said, that's fine, but I can't be your doctor uh, because I need to protect my staff. And so I didn't see her for several years and she showed up at my door one time and said, Dr. Tudor, I have to apologize to you. I feel really bad. And I said, don't feel bad. We disagree, but that's fine. She says, oh no, you don't know. Uh, after you told me about rabies and I was adamant about it, I, my cats and I lived happily in, in our apartment. And then one day a bat flew in, bit both of my cats and it was rabid. And this is the thing to understand. And there's no cure for rabies. So those cats died. Yeah. 
and had the bat or the cat bitten the person, Correct. it's very important that they get to the hospital and get rabies post-exposure vaccine right. because there's no cure for rabies. So what we're, we're talking about is something called zoonotic disease. And what that word means is uh, a disease that animals can get, that can the people can also get and put your life at risk. So the reason that rabies vaccines are so important and so uh, stringent in some states in the law is for that very reason, because there's lives at stake and there's no cure exactly. and there's no test until the animals passed away right. yeah with that um, there are cats that are too unhealthy to be vaccinated we also That's have to true. think about that and um, oftentimes there's residual immunity that lasts beyond the recommended booster interval that we have to consider so we always could consider doing a blood test called an antibody titer to see if the antibody levels are at a protective threshold above or below if it's below and the cat's lifestyle merits it doing a booster vaccine would be a smart idea provided the cat is healthy enough but um, cats that have autoimmune diseases cats that have cancer cats that have had um, anaphylactic, which are allergic type reactions to vaccinations in the past, should be thought differently about their vaccination schedules. And, and doing a rabies antibody, or actually, excuse me, any vaccine antibody titer, provided it's legally allowed to do that, is a smart and responsible health decision because you're thinking about really what's the overall health status of my cat. Yes, maybe my cat could have their health worsened by a vaccine. I'm going to test their blood to see if the blood level of antibodies is sufficient. Unfortunately, blood level antibodies doesn't always 100% correlate with being protective, but for the most part, it does. There are, there are studies in dogs that show that dogs that have sufficient parvovirus antibodies, when given parvovirus intravenously as injection and also administered orally, have sufficient protection. So the but blood tests are there and, and prove something that there is immune response. In the state where I practice, the vaccine is required for rabies. So I, I, as far as I know, there's no known protective titer for the rabies vaccine. Are you aware of one um, where there I, is a proven protective titer? Well, when ca I have a lot of ca patients that travel and go to places where they have to, they're going to rabies-free countries or rabies-free states like Hawaii. And so it is deemed when they have a protective level of antibodies that you do with the blood test before they travel that if it is protected at a protective level then they're allowed to come into the rabies free area so when it gets down to like the little specifics of the of, of the, the terminology i'm not quite sure but yeah. to me that yields confidence that this pet is sufficiently protected if your state doesn't have the law um the law for, requ for required rabies right. they oh, won't accept a protective titer no they won't and actually Correct. so california is a little we're always ahead of the curve a little <laughs> bit so for dogs there are there is something there's a law that is in place that can help dogs that are sick or have been sickened by vaccines before provided they've been rabies vaccinated <clears throat> and they're under the care of a veterinarian they can be exempt from further rabies vaccine if they have cancer and are on chemotherapy besides prednisone if they have um, an autoimmune disease like immune mediated hemolytic anemia and have had a, re a event of it after their vaccine or have had a recurrent IMHA episode or if they had the severe allergic reaction to a rabies vaccine. Yes, that's dogs. The same situation doesn't apply to cats. Unfortunately, I wish it did. But, but, it, um, it, but it creates it, a conversation. It does, and it's a good point to, that you should feel free to have those conversations with your veterinarian yes. about your comfort level with your pet and whether you're willing to take the risk under cer certain circumstances that if a situation should arise, you would be in violation of the law. Sure. You know, it's possible yeah. that you're willing, you know, if, if vaccinating your pet will put its life at risk, that you are willing to take that right. responsibility. And for the most part, as Dr. Bills pointed out, vaccines are very safe. I have seen very, very few vaccine adverse responses that are life-threatening in my years of practice. I sometimes will see mild lethargy, a little discomfort at the vaccine site. Usually depends on how much the pet squirmed during the injection. Maybe they're, appetite, or maybe they're just a little lethargic, but generally vaccines are very safe. And I always recommend doing one vaccination at a time because once that well. vaccine goes in the body, you can't take it back. Mm -hmm. So um, it might be inconvenient to go to the vet on more than one occasion to do it, but it's really the safer decision. Also, if you do one vaccine at a time and you wait a two to three week period, you give the body the chance to optimally respond to that vaccine. And maybe you don't have to go to have the full vet appointment. You could go in as a technician appointment, the technician to do it. So always think about like creating, working with your vet closely to create the safest vaccine strategy that's appropriate for your pet. So again, work with an expert ask questions, and make sure you're communicating with that expert. Thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV, the cat edition. If you want to keep the conversation going, we'd love to hear from you. You can do that in the comment section down below. And remember, you can always reach out to us at PetWorldInsider.com. To find out more information about our guests, you can find that 
about Dr. Ken Tudor at thewelldogplace.com, Dr. Liz Bales at nobowlcat.com, and Dr. Patrick Mahaney at patrickmahaney.com. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a part of the process here at Natural Pets TV.